2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Just meanwhile, just let me know like what will be the output of my mapper and how it will go to my reducer. Okay. So later on you can try at your home to write how to write the pseudocodes and all on Java. Just, just let me know the flow through like how it will be flowed through mapper to reducer and how you will get the output. Is it fine Rahul? Okay, cool. So let's go to our PPT first. Okay, so today we will start discussing about APIs. So API is nothing but application programming interface, right? So when Hadoop was started earlier, we had an older version of API. So the format and look and feel of our MapReduce program was quite different when compared to our new API. So when Hadoop, the latest version of Hadoop that is 0.20 versions were released, the new API have been introduced with those versions. So earlier to 0.20 in the sense 0.19 and 18 have old APIs itself. So whatever the companies they have of started working on Hadoop from quite long period, they use it to have programs in older versions of APIs only. So what they are doing right now is they have started writing the code, rewriting or I can say like they have started rewriting all the code which includes all these new API formats. So why actually the new API have been introduced? It is designed to make the API easier to evolve in the future. So if you just compare, try to compare the new API versus old API, the code that we are writing will be a bit less and also the kind of information it shows you is very abstract. I mean it's suppose if you write 10 lines in your older API version it is enough that you write only 8 lines in your new API. So that's where the beauty of APIs start and the new API is type incompatible as I told you so everything needs to be rewritten to take the advantage of our new API. And coming to the second point favors abstract classes over interfaces. So in the sense we can add a method to our abstract class without breaking older implementations of our class. So adding up of new classes is very easier here and here mapper and reducer itself are abstract classes. But if you see the older phases you will give it as extends phase with implementations. But here the mappers and reducers are were written in a different way. We will see it in our next slide. Okay, The old API was deprecated. So as of now if anyone is trying to write new programs in Hadoop or if any company is trying to start any new project they have they are not concentrating on the old APIs since everything needs to be converted at least in a late, later time. So they have started writing the programs in our new API itself. However, the new API is not still stable and future complete in Hadoop 0.20x. Uh, this particular point, I am not going to support it because as of now, if you see today, it's very stable as well. I mean, this was the story which was behind at least six months back, but now it is very stable and people are started using new API also. Okay, The old API should not have been deprecated as quickly as when new one is introduced. Uh, you can have this point as a generic point only in the sense if at all if any new 
a version or if any new thing comes into picture just directly don't jump into it and start using it so as we had discussed about the earlier java versions or whatever uh, the type of operating system that we are going to use whenever a new thing is introduced just don't jump into it right so as of now the stabilized versions of Ubuntu or CentOS are only used but not the latest versions of Ubuntu or CentOS are not being used in the companies so that is what is being followed when when it comes to APIs processing as well so let's see few differences between old API versus new API so if you see the first command itself the importing statement itself is changing between old API versus new API so in new API I am using it as hadoop.mapreduce.star so all the <coughs> packages or all the libraries that were related to mapreduce can be imported through hadoop.mapreduce in new API whereas I will be using hadoop.mapred okay coming to the driver code if you see the configuration I will use it as job conf in our driver code when in my old API whereas I will use it as configuration in my new API so the next statement would be job job is equal to new job conf right so I am extracting all these conf object properties into my job and then I will set the class names by set jar by class but here I will give it the class properties here itself in my job conf statement right I can I, I will give it as conf comma driver dot class name so if at all the name changes I will just change it here but here it will be read by job by class okay also I just wanted to let you know like uh, in our old APIs there is a mechanism called as push and pull style of iteration so what push function is doing is the it reads all the key value record pairs and they were pushed to the mapper phase in our old API so that needs to be manually pushed by some of our taken care by our framework but when it comes to new API the mapper itself will pull the records using the map function so here the framework doesn't need to take care of it so when I write a map function using my new API it will pull all the required records and it will process it and also the same function with reducer also so once the map functionality is given the reducer will directly pull all the key value pairs of course there is shuffle and short phase in between but once everything is ready and everything the shuffling and sorting is done the map phase I mean the reduce phase will automatically pull all the key value pairs so using this process records can be processed in batch mode rather than executing one by one because if it is done in a map uh, manual phase like the pushing and pushing of key value pairs it can be done only a step by step process but when it comes to that functionality taken over by our mapper or reducer they can process it in multiple multiple versions right so it can pull it in batch mode itself so it can maybe it can pull some 10 to 20 key value pairs at a single moment and it can process them at a single point of time and coming to the job client here the control is taken by taken care by the job itself whereas in the old API the job control is performed by job client so in the new API I am using a new class itself called as job class so that class itself is going to take care all that functionality of taking the controls and pulling up the data or information whatever needed once and when the client submits the job and coming to the mapper phase as I told you the abstraction takes advantage in our new API so in our old API we use it to write the program as public class my mapper extends my produce space implements mapper but here directly I can give it as public class my mapper so my mapper is nothing but my mapper name so I can give anything in it public class my wish dot name something like that extends mapper 
and then once you go into the main function public void map the key and value remains the same but in mapper phase we had a in our older version we had an output collector and reporter where it will collect all the key value pairs that were produced by my mapper so output collector is a class where it gets stored i mean where it stores or my key value pairs and reporter is the one which will let us know internally like okay i had collected all the key value pairs but this functionality has been taken care only by a single class called as context so context is the phase or you can consider it as a class or even something object which is used to communicate with the map and our reduce systems so this is the guy who is going to communicate with our mappers and reducer phases like okay i had collected all the key value pairs and it is at this position and reducer can read all these key value pairs from this particular point or something like that okay so and here i will use it as context dot write to write all the values and here i will take it as output dot collector so i will write as o dot collector and in the new api i will write it as c dot write so that's what few differences between our old api and new apis so let's start discussing about how to get the data into the mapper so there is something internally happening apart from discussing about the input splits so we will look at it okay so let me ask you a question how mapper is getting the key value pairs for mapper so on a high level if we think it is done by the framework right but still if we go internally and think about it the our input format is the one which specifies how to get this key value pairs right so the data passed to the mapper is specified by an input format and this input format is specified in our driver code so if you think our driver code there we are setting up the mapper class name reducer class name and my input format on my output format and the key format for my mapper and uh, value output format from my mapper class and then key and value outputs from my reducer so these are the things i am going to give in my driver class right i mean at least these are the mandatory things apart from that we can give so many things like i, I can specify my own partitioner or i can specify my own combiner or whatever it might be but few things that are mandatory or the above ones which i told you right so the functionality of our input format is divided into three phases the first one is it will validate the input location so it will see whether the location is available or not and if it is available it will go and check whether it has some input data or not so once it has validated that okay the input location is fine and we are able to see the input file the second function what it's going to do is it will create the input splits so if you remember input format is the one who is responsible for creating our input splits right so based on the record sizes and based on the values i mean based on the uh, amount of data our input file is having it will divide it into our input splits and also taking the block size into consideration it will try to create the input splits as much close to our block size so and the third functionality is it creates the key value pairs and and it will pass it to the respective mappers so it may pass it as such as the respective mappers may be called as so i am trying to just let you know the default type byte offset dot value so this is the default one which had which we had discussed right so if you take the above example itself the key value pairs to my mapper will be passed as byte offset comma value in the sense 0 comma hi how are you and next uh, maybe just imagine that how are you has been ended at position 25 so the next record will be processed as 26 comma where hi where have you been these days and the next record might be some 42 comma where can i find you so that is how the key value pairs are going to be 
divided in our default format so that it is nothing but byte offset comma value so each mapper deals with a single input split so once we are ready with our input splits the actual map phase will come into picture so each map phase will take each of the input split and till this point we are aware of what happens right so we had discussed all these things till this point so the next point which is going to be introduced is input format creates record reader objects to extract key value records from the input source so record reader is a guy who is responsible for reading records from the input splits in the form of key value pairs so there should be some intermediate object or something else such that we will be able to read them in the form of key value pairs so the default one is mappers comma byte offset dot value right so if at all i want to read it in another form maybe i want to take my first word as key itself so if you take my first line hi should be my key and how are you should be my value and coming to the next one where should be my key and have you been these days should be my value so if at all i want to read it in this format i have to declare a special record reader in my program such that it will record it i mean it will read it in this phase okay but everything actually if you go off by default everything is abstracted we cannot see that anywhere right but if you go into our advanced map reduce functions or something like that that is where we will get all these into picture so there you will write your own record reader setups or you will write your own partitioners combiners or few input formats also you will try to declare for yourselves so all those are user defined functions and all these will come into picture only when you write programs in your advanced map reduce but the simple map reduce programs will just directly use the default functions okay so if we see our map reduce in a big picture the first one what it happens is we will get the input file so if you see this picture my input file my first input file was divided into three input splits and the next input file is divided into only one input split so after it is divided into splits the next functionality is there should be someone who will able to read our input splits in the form of key value pairs right so the input format in our input format we have a record reader such that it will read all our input splits in the form of key value pairs and once it is ready with that format it will send all these values to our a mapper function so for each of the input split there will be internally a default record reader which will, which it will convert into key values and then our mapper phase starts and we all know what happens once we start with our mapper phase right so it will create some intermediate key value pairs and then if at all it is needed i will go into partitioner and i will do whatever the shuffles and sorted shortings that were needed so don't worry about this partitioner we will discuss once this particular information is or once this particular portion of our syllabus is finished okay so just right now just imagine there is one partitioner internally used and after that there will be our reducer functionality so our reducer functionality will give our final output values right so but once it comes to reducer there will be something more called as record writer so record writer is another reducer so for each reducer we will have a record writer object and it is responsible for writing outputs from our reducer in the form of key value pairs and there is something called as output format uh, guys are you able to hear me
హలో 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 గైస్ ఆర్ యూ ఏబుల్ టు హియర్ మీ హలో ఓకే ఓకే స్కూల్ ఓకే సో రికార్డ్ రైటర్ ఈస్ ద గై ఆర్ హీ ఈస్ ద ఆబ్జెక్ట్ విచ్ విల్ బీ ఏబుల్ టు ప్రాసెస్ అవర్ ఫైనల్ కీ వాల్యూ పేర్స్ అండ్ ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ దెర్ ఈస్ సంథింగ్ కాల్డ్ ఎస్ అవుట్పుట్ ఫార్మాట్ which is responsible so the functionality of output format is not much critical like our input format so the output format is just used to responsible or it is just responsible for writing the outputs from our reducer so here this record writer and record reader there is nothing specific to our hadoop system it is just all our java programs right so internally all these functionalities will be written in the form of java code only so if you want to override those things it's nothing but you have to extend those java programs so that you can build it of your own so if you take our word count example itself so because of the default output format we are having the key and values so my default record writer and record reader what it is saying is display the output in key comma value pairs such as it is divided by my divided by a tab so this is the default one that was given in our record reader and writer so and that is the reason so if you observe or if you remember the word count output program you had seen like key space and some value right it is not displayed as it is not displayed as key comma value right so whatever the outputs we had we got it was in the form of high space 2 house space 3 so it is all tab separated right so this tab separated is the default one and it was decided by our default record readers so it's it's up to my wish like if i want to display them in the form of high to 2 or how equal to 3 or something like that so it's up to me but i had used the default one and that's the reason i had got the output as high space 2 and how space 3 not particularly space high tab 2 and how tab 3 so that is what the functionality of record reader and writer and so let's also something discuss about our input formats so there are different kinds of input formats so if you see the most used input formats we have different things so the default ones are text input format key value input formats and sequence file input formats i mean these are at least highly used input formats in our mapreduce programs so the default one is just the text input format what we had discussed till now so what it will do is the key will be the byte offset of the line and the value is the line contents itself right so if you see the text input format uh, if you have the text in this form on the top of the crumpety tree the quangle wangle sat but his face you could not see on account of his beware hat so if it, if this is the record i had got it in my input split it will be divided into one split of 
four records. So this whole thing will be taken as one single split and it was divided into four records. So the four records will be divided only with the byte offset itself. So it will start with zero and that's the reason I have it as zero comma on the top of crumpty tree and then after that the next position 33 comma something values and so on so forth. So this is what the default we had seen till now. So if you see the next one which is key value text input format what it says is unlike text input format key input formats key is the offset within the file keys are also the actual values within the file. So key is nothing but some part of a my input record itself so it's not the byte offset here so it will be I can decide like the first word will be my key so as we discussed if you see the same input example it will be taken as suppose if my input line is having as line 1 on the type of the on the top of the crumpty tree line to the quangle quangle set in the above data the this particular arrow will be represented as a tab character. So if I specify the separator as a tab itself, so the key will be formed as line comma 1 and the next the value will be formed as on the top of the crumpty tree. So uh, first after every first tab I want to divide it into key comma value. So all the contents before my tab should be key and all the contents after my first tab should be my value. So if I say in that way my output would be in the form of line 1 comma on the top of the crumpty tree, line 2 comma the quangle wangle sat, line 3 comma but his face you could see and line 4 comma on account of his beaver hat. So all these things you can specify through mapreduce dot input dot key value line recorder dot key value separator property. So the default one is the tab character and that's the reason I had shown you this example but it's up to you like which particular which particular point you want to use instead of your tabs. You may be using at the rate or dollar exclamatory mark it's up to you what you want to use but that particular functionality you can override it through our mapreduce.input.keyvalue line recorder dot key dot value dot separator. So we have to give this in our configuration files, right? So any questions on this? Excuse me. Okay. So the next one is N line input format. With text input format and key value text input format, each mapper receives a variable number of lines of inputs. The number depends on the size of the split and the length of the line, right? So suppose if you take my old example itself, it depends on how many records I want to process in this particular input split based on my, based on the size of how much I am dividing for each of the input split. So by default I have to process whole input split itself. I cannot stop somewhere in between in processing the input split, right? So, but when it comes to n-line input format, the case is different. So, if you want your mappers to receive a fixed number of lines in, of input, then n-line input format is the right guide to use, okay? Like text input format, the keys are the by offsets within the files and values are the lines themselves. So, it is nothing but equal to our text input format. So the dividing of key and value is nothing but same. But how many records you want to process in your particular input split, on that one you can have your control with our n-line input format. So if you take this particular same example, n refers to number of lines of input that each mapper receives. With n set to 1, the default one, so the default is only one record will be processed through my mapper. So with n set as 1, each mapper receives exactly one line of input. The mapreduce.input.lineinputformat.linesperMap dot 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 lines per map property controls this value of n. So again I can have some control on this value where I can give it in my configuration directories. So 
if for example n is 2 then each split contains two lines so the whole split is divided into two splits itself so it's up to me like how much quantity of data I want to process at a single point of time using this n line input format so one mapper will receive the first two key value pairs that is 0 comma on the top of crumpty tree and 33 comma the quangle wangle sat and the next mapper will receive the remaining two lines so the dividing of key value pairs is same as well as text input format but how much I want to process that I can control through my n line input format so let's see something more about input formats so there is something more called as sequence file input format so sequence file format stores all kind of binary key value pairs okay so if at all I want to process some binary data then this particular kind of format will come into picture so th there are two kinds in it the first one is sequence file as text input format sequence file as binary input format so the default one is uh, they will be processed only through text formats only but in very few cases or maybe some through image processing or somewhere those can be processed only when it is converted into binary formats so for image processing and all those things also I can write my MapReduce programs but how I will process them is different when it comes to some image processing or PDFs processing or something like that but in most of the projects and most of the cases we will be doing our analysis on the text files itself but in some cases we will be using the images as well so at that moment this sequence file input format will come into picture so sequence file as text input format what it does is it is a variant of a sequence file input format only so it is form of our sequence files so all these files will be read sequentially in the form of key value pairs whereas it will internally convert it into binary formats so the sequence file input format converts the sequence file keys and values to text objects and the conversion is performed by some function called as two strings on the keys and values so this is, this is used when we are processing our image files but internally it will all the binary values will be converted into text objects but if I want to process that binary files only in the form of binary formats only then I will go ahead and use sequence file as binary input format so sequence file as binary input format is a variant again of our sequence file input format that retrieves the sequence files keys and values as opaque binary objects so don't worry about this processing of image so we have few more slides on how we are going to process this image files as well so at that moment I will talk much more about this sequence file input formats but as of now just remember that all the sequence files input formats will be processed in the form of key value pairs and it is divided into binaries only so any questions till now so we will try to wind up today oh, I have a question one second can the input value to mapper be a list collection as opposed to text so Rahul I mean uh, what do you mean by the list comma collection so you want to mention it like all keys and values were kept at one single way as a single key and value and processed at a single point of time is that your question So are you, are you asking as hi, how, or all these forms the key? Ah shit. For example, key the value is a list of number of examples. No, for for mapper this is not the case because mapper will read everything as one single and one value. 
for each key the value is a list of numbers for example this list of numbers so if you see this example hi how are you the keys and values would be as delete okay the keys and values would be in the form of zero and the value itself is it is taken as a single line hi how are you it is not divided into separate parts so it's in my input mapper functionality i will try to distribute or unstring my whole line right so but for mapper it is a single input line so is that your question or it is something else okay fine so for before going into the map functionality it don't have anything in it in his mind other than start from read from this position to read till this position as a single value so it will take everything whatever you write over there as a single one value but inside my mapper function i will try to divide it or i will try to read it separately depending on my requirement okay So guys any other questions Okay So fine guys let's wind up for today so tomorrow we will discuss about some output formats as well on a very high level and from tomorrow onwards we will start discussing on partitioner okay so that is one of the major topic that we have to discuss in map reduce and there is much more to talk on partitioner but it's not it's just not a single line what we discussed it till now okay fine thank you all for joining let's meet tomorrow at the same time okay HTK Infosys provides world class online IT training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide H2K Infosys how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide for a free demo class visit us at h2kinfosys.com